Today, I'll be joined by hilarious comedian and actor Jay Farrell. We'll be talking about his new film, Spinning Gold, why he's the best impressionist of all time, and update us on everything he has going on. What's happening? What's happening, man? I can't, hey, I can't call it money in my wallet, walking slow, drinking cold water, getting ready for this release. You know what I'm saying? Because that movie fit to be a beast. I already know. Absolutely. You've been you've been at it for a long time. You started doing stand-up around the age of 14, 15 years old? 15, 16. Yep, yep, yep. Yeah, so is watching. comedy in your DNA? Uh, absolutely, man. My um, my family is funny as I don't know what. I got a... I got so many characters in my family. My dad is just, yeah. my dad is one of the funniest people in the world. And if I make him laugh, I know I'm doing, I'm doing what I'm supposed to do. And now he's laughing. He's, he's laughing. He used to laugh at me. Now he's laughing. I'm like, ah, I'm break. I'm wearing you down, Papa. I'm wearing you down. So, um, yeah, man, we all, for everybody funny. My mom funny. She from Brooklyn. You know what I mean? So, you know, they don't really got no filter, you know, uh, and it can really make somebody sensitive uh, uh hurt, but whatever, you know. We we got we me and you have something in common. So you you from Virginia. I'm from I'm from I'm from Maryland, right? I'm from Baltimore. But oh, we, snap. But we not we not from the DMV. What which <laughs> wait, which what you mean now? What I mean, mean I mean 757, not the DMV. Baltimore is not the D Baltimore is not DMV. DMV is only that area. It's not only true. it's only as Arlington is V Arlington VA, PG. DC is them surrounding areas. DMV's like, bro. DC, Maryland, DC, Maryland, Virginia. It's all part of the family, bro. DC, Maryland, Virginia. Are you in Maryland? You you're you're from Maryland. Baltimore is its own island. You from Maryland, bro? Oh, okay, okay. Oh, so y'all Brexiting? That's what that's what that's what you're telling me. Y'all doing a Brexit for the say That's fine. Okay, fine. You know I, what? I do hear people. I hear people. I hear some people from the seven five seven area. Talk about um, being part of DMV, but then I hear some people who like, "Now nah, we not DMV." So it's, I guess it's just based on like who you talking to. Yeah, those people are delusional, man. You, <laughs> hey, it's the, if you if you are in DC, Maryland, or Virginia, you are part of this. You are part of the DMV, homie. So we all fam, and we all use Old Bay season. We all know about Mumbo. Everybody know about Mumbo. And you were you were in this area recently, and I missed it because I was on the West Coast. But you was in um, you were in Timonium. Yeah, yeah, Word. I was just Word. yeah, that was crazy. I was at Magoobies, man. That was uh, Magoobies, exactly. Yeah, dog. All the shows, all everything, everything sold out. It was every show sold out. I forget. I don't know if I added. Did I add some to that, dude? I don't even remember. I keep adding shows this year. Stand up is such a stand up is such a fertile ground right now. And for me, I've never seen this type of attention uh, as far as my stuff goes. So um, I'm just I'm I'm happy. I put in the work. And, um, you know, uh, people that do get a chance to come out, they're like, yo, dog, you, we didn't know you could do that. And I'm like, what the hell you thought I was going to do? Just stand up here and do impressions for an hour? That boring as shit. Nobody want to see that. No, nah, you, 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 you've been putting the work in, and we know you got it, man. And congratulations on, on spending gold. Like, I, you know, I think it's a very important film that, that people really, really, really need to see. It's a, it's a history lesson. Um, tell, yeah. us, tell, us, tell us how the project came about for you. Uh, well, um, actually, uh, Timothy Bogart, who's uh, Neil Bogart's son, he reached out to me years ago. And this 2014, we sat down. He said, you know, I got this. Um, it might have been 13, as a matter of fact. That was, <laughs> 13 was a little bit of a uh, 13 was funny because uh, <laughs> I had hips. So I got rid of them shits. I don't got them. No more. <laughs> I got rid of them shits. Um, <laughs> but you know what? You, you know, so uh, so Tim, <laughs> Timothy hit me up. Uh, we had we had uh, dinner in New York, or no, we had lunch in New York, and uh, he told me about this. He told me about this project, this story. And he was like, "Man, uh, Casablanca Records, Buddha Records." He was like, "You know, the story of uh, Kiss and and, and P Funk and uh, um, you know, even Bootsy, uh, uh, also um, uh, uh, Barry Gordy, um, Donna Summers, Bill Withers." Um, Freaking uh, uh, village people. He, he t these are all the artists, the prominent art artists that were on that label. And, um, he told me at first, you know, he wanted me to, he said he he knows he wants me in it, but he's trying to figure out which role he's going to give me, right? So at first he was like, uh, he, he had me doing Frankie Crocker. That's who I was supposed to be at first. Um, but I read, I read for, I read for, I read for, uh, uh, for, the sidekick role, which is um um Cecil Holmes. I read 
I read for uh, Neil Bogart's sidekick. He was like, I think you could, he was like, this has, this has much, it's more substance in the story. And I think you could pull it off. So I want you to audition for this part. I said, all right, cool. So I auditioned for that part, ended up getting it. And then um, shout out to my boy, Chris Red. Chris Red got uh, Frankie Crocker. Um, and, um, you know, we, <laughs> it's, it's been a long journey. You talking about, talking about this film in 2013 and then Ooh, people don't understand how long is this stuff take yeah and then filming it starting to film it in 2019 mm -hmm. having the world shut down and then pick up filming it again in 2021 to finally have a finished finished product to go to the movie theaters in 2023 so it's it's been a journey but um uh i feel like uh <laughs> I feel like a lot of people are going to get a chance to see different chops in this movie. Um, and I know you, I know you've seen it, bro. So there's a, there's a scene in there that if it, if, if enough people see it, it could, it could, it could go, it could be nominated for, for something big. So I, I just hope, I hope, I feel like this is the year of, of me, like really coming into myself with everything with, with, with acting, with, um, with stand up, with, um, even with music, dude, I got music. I got music dropping, like, like official, official stuff. Like, and I got bars. You know, I got bars. I, but I, I know. In the water. You said what now? So it's something in the water. It's just so, it's something in the water. You know, you drink that VA seven five seven water, and God dang it, you a superhero, God dang it. You know what I mean? Like literally, you drink the water, and all of a sudden you fall into the black panther. That is what you do. I never <laughs> you know what I'm so um it, it, I feel like everything is just pushing dude and um and hey I'm happy about it I, I feel blessed and uh I pay I, I pay enough people I'll tell you that right now I pay enough people so <laughs> when I say that you know, a lot of people get percentages you know what I'm saying I'm like god dang it is wow Are we married you take half my check anyway you gotta put the work in and you gotta uh and you gotta have a team you cannot do it without a team bro that's that's some real stuff everybody has a team even people that you think Michael Jackson had a team. Got Dagger Prince. Well, Prince was the only one who could do it by himself. Okay. He was the only one. Okay. Everybody else, they need a team. You know what I mean? Prince was just like, I don't care. I play every instrument. I don't need anybody. Uh, and he didn't he play 24 at 22 instruments. Jeez. Nah, yeah, it's, nah, Prince, Prince was different, man. Prince, Prince was different. Without when I'm thinking musicians, I'm always like, I'm going Prince and Stevie Wonder. Like, or like no. you know what I mean? Can we, hey, can we talk about how when I was on Family Feud, they did, and they were asking biggest pop stars of all time, and I said, Prince, no, it wasn't even on the board. That's crazy. Who created that board? I, yo, I don't know <laughs> what I'm saying. That's why, yeah, they the people. That's they, crazy. That's yeah, crazy. They, hey, they. It's crazy. I know. Even Steve Harvey was, he said, boy, that don't make no sense, boy. You mean to tell me, you know, good and hell well, that should be up on that ball, boy. Boy, everybody leave. Everybody leave. We walking out of here. We walking out of here. Everybody just got up and walked out. Because we were like, yo, how did- I would have lost. I would have lost, man. I'm like, I'm I'm, I'm, really, I'm like, Prince, the King, and Hov. <laughs> you said Hov? Hey, my cousin said Chris Brown. I said, you done lost your mind. <laughs> <laughs> now with a survey of white people, they're not gonna pick right. Chris Brown. But right. I thought they were gonna right. pick Prince. I mean, I mean, Breezy has frequented all communities uh -huh. when it comes to the ladies. Of course, he has fans, but right, king of pop, one of the kings of pop. You don't have Prince up there. Yeah, that's man. wild. That's wild. It, that man ain't been gone that long. They try to forget about him already. That's crazy. Oh my goodness. They didn't, they didn't like him. They didn't want him. They didn't like him because he was getting acquiring his masters. They, you mm -hmm. know, when you do that, they don't like you, man. <laughs> Absolutely. Absolutely. The, the funny, huh? The, the funny comes, the funny comes so so natural to you. Um, yeah. um, just in and in, and in, in, in just like in from based upon like this this short conversation, right? So I wonder is playing a role um where you don't get a chance to, to land a whole lot of jokes is it difficult is it something you had to learn or no i mean you know uh the good thing about me uh is i did grow up in theater you know like that's where i started that's why i really had no fear of the stage when i started doing stand-up because i was already out there like i got i got scared on stage when i was uh nine years old i was powhatan and pocahontas and i didn't know the line <laughs> and my teacher <laughs> still put me up and made me do it in front of everybody and the kids behind me 
they had to like feed me the lines so I would and and, and get me through it. Like my friends got me through it. They got me through it. But Mr. Sammons, Mr. Sammons, he was a he was a butt at the time. I thought he was a butt, right? Mm -hmm. Fast forward to 11th grade year. 11th grade year, I do this uh play called uh uh what's called um the devil uh what's it called? Uh uh the, the those damn the damn Yankees. That's what it was called. Um, I don't know if you've ever seen that very, very, uh, very cool uh, screenplay is, is is dope. If you get a chance to you get a chance to check it out. Um, but two weeks before um, and I didn't like I said, I didn't know my lines when I was little. Right. So I, I said to myself, I'm always going to know my I'm always going to know my lines. I have to do that. Right. So cut to two weeks before the damn Yankees comes out the lead. This this dude named this dude. I'm not even gonna give him justice because he probably take this clip and put it on his Facebook page or whatever. And try to, <laughs> try to get know. his likes up. Get his likes right, up. Right, 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 right. So I'm not I'm not giving anybody clout, but the lead <laughs> dropped out of mm -hmm. the play two weeks before, and I had to play the lead, Mr. Applegate. Mm -hmm. I was Miss Shuler. Shout out to Miss Shuler. I love Miss Shuler. That's my drama teacher from Indian River. Um, she said, I think you can do it. I learned those lines in two weeks, right? Word. The performance. At opening night, Mr. Sammons was there. And he said, I knew you could do it. I knew you always had that in you. So I'm not foreign. I'm not foreign to the stage when it comes to dramatic acting, man, and being able to go there because, you know, I, I was at Haral Players, theater troops, all in Virginia. You know, shout out to Hugh Copeland. God dang it, man. I'm giving, you're getting a lot today. God dang it. <laughs> Ripping the you ripping the threads off, Jay Farrell. You just pulling back the layers and seeing everything. I, yeah, but so... It wasn't hard. It was um. It it was comfortable, and I don't know. And I know you saw it. It didn't it didn't it seem it, natural, right? I was just natural, kidding. natural, natural. I, this is this is what I've been I trying. Was wondering, to I was wondering, like like is what what acting what acting be number one? Like could it could it be number one for you? Yeah, could you, yeah, you, I mean, you have you have that skill set? I'm I'm trying to look. I've been trying to tell people this for years. I've been I've been trying to tell these folks, man. Now, of course, you have gotten to see some of the dramatic chops in like the movies, like Unsane. I don't know if you checked out that movie I did with Christina Milian. I'm I'm a little funny in that too, but I do have serious parts. Uh, uh, Resort to Love. Um, um, there was another uh, movie I did with Ashley Benson called Private Property. You know, that was another one that was that was dramatic, and you can see how a lot of people who are comedians or transition over to that. Mark Lawrence just did a, uh, right. he just did a film where he plays a detective, not funny at all. Um, but it's, it's, it's a serious role. You know what I mean? So if you're good in one, if you're good at making somebody laugh, you can make somebody cry too. You know, you have those skill sets because comedians, we have to reflect on life. So we've, whatever's going on, whatever we're portraying out there, whatever we're giving out there, this is actual life that we're like painting for you. And we've right. been, that's why you can connect with it. So it's just natural. Eddie Murphy is great at drama. He should have been at an Oscar. Jamie, Eddie, Jamie Foxx has Jamie Fox. a fucking Oscar. <laughs> Eddie Foxx. And you know, look, Jamie Foxx got a foray in 2004. Right, exactly. Um, yo. Uh, it, it, there's so there's so many you uh, another one you want to talk about um that could cross over to that uh uh, uh damn what is his name uh, what is his name I'm I'm trying to get another I'm trying to get another one out of hey Mike Epps Mike Epps is good in dram at dramatic roles if you if you look at his chop he's good um another one uh, uh Robin Williams oh absolutely yeah absolutely Robin Williams yeah. all of his characters had so much vulnerability with them. Like you could almost, you could see the childlike innocence in his eyes. And it was like, he could, he could just make you, cry. he can make you laugh. He can make you cry. Jim Carrey is the same goddamn. Guy. I almost forgot Robin Williams did stand up. I know, right? Oh. Lot, and here's something, here, here's something else funny. A lot of people forget that Jamie Foxx is a great stand up comedian. People be forgetting that. Like, because they're so used to seeing him in other things. But it's right. like today, in today's age, you can cross every border, every everything you want to do, you can do it as long as you put the work in. You see Jake Paul, I'll say, I'll give an example, Jake Paul and Logan Paul, like you see how they just flipping into the boxing, influences, going to the WWE, all of this, it's possible. Donald Glover, the way that he crossed over, the way that, the way that he did Atlanta, the way that he did music, the way that he's doing movies, it's, you can, it's okay to be multi-talented in 2023. 
Because every as long as you have a fan base and you have people who are willing to give you business, you can't get canceled. Real talk. What what what? I wonder who what lines up for you the most because every everyone knows that that you're, you're the best when it comes to doing the, in, impressions. Like you got that crown, um, it, it's ridiculous. Like nobody can even fuck with you on that, right? So, <laughs> so, so what what biopic? What biopic? Um, could you see yourself playing in? As far you know as what? like how you how you look and your ability to be able to capture that person's mannerisms and that person's you know like that whole vibe. I mean, there's a dude. There's a few. I mean, the, the most, the easiest one you can eat, you can literally see it. I can say Eddie Murphy. If I get a chance to play Eddie Murphy in a biopic, yeah, I'd be you got to throw that red leather suit on. You yeah. Got hey man, I can definitely <laughs> listen. I can put the red leather suit on and just talk to the people and just, you know, just be cool. You know, that's what it's all about. Just being really cool. Also, it's coming. It's coming. It's coming. You know what? I can also play Kanye West. I could play Kanye West in the biopic. I was looking at I was looking at our side by sides and I was looking at our smiles. I was like, oh shit. I was like, I, I kind of have a I got a Kanye smile. I know I got the rest in Kanye face. Uh, you like, gotta get the jaw implants though. They had to implant the jaw. Like you gotta get you know, the voice with the wearing the jaw mask. Dude, it was so hard for me to try to do that on SNL when I had the uh, I had like containers in and they put like two little jaws in the back of my back here and pause. <laughs> In the back of my cheeks, so it was, I was talking, but as I'm talking, it's coming up, bro. Like it was, it was I was trying to keep it down. So I was, huh? You know, because um, you know, um, bro, it's just like I try to tell people like you know, tidbits of you know information, and you know, they just um, you know, people don't listen because you know they don't want the truth. And when they get the truth, they can't handle it. You know, he's just. <laughs> so I can see myself doing that. But anybody, Will Smith, I could play Will Smith in a biopic if they they put my ears. <laughs> so you, if you, if you ever seen, <laughs> I'm just gonna hold him like this now. If you've ever seen me do, um, <laughs> why do I still got him? If you've ever seen me do uh, uh, behind the actor on uh, YouTube, that series I used to do with the two actors going back and forth. I had Will Smith. I put tape behind my ears, <laughs> and joints out like this, like dog, because because Will Smith got some sonars on his head. Them joints, is, <laughs> them joints is ultra four K out this way. He get the cri he get the crispy signals. That's what he get. He get all the the squiggly channels that they pick up in the earlobes. That's what Will Smith get. Shout out to Will Smith though. He don't need no more. He'll he'll need no bad press. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I, you have any specials in the works? Yeah, man. Um, I'm working. I'm working on the material for this. Uh, for this special, and I haven't done one since uh, 2014. But I needed to. Uh, you know, I really needed to like put the work in and um, just go on the road. You know what I mean? Go on the road and and really get comfortable, comfortable, comfortable on stage again. Because you know, you're doing SNL. You're doing a million things. You can't put as much focus um on that when you're all when you gotta you gotta split when you have to split it uh for snl um and it's not saying that it can't be done but you'll have better results of <laughs> doing a special if you have the time to go on the road and and constantly do the jokes over and over and over and over again and then you know i found i found my voice i know where my voice is now like right. where when i was like 26 27 i didn't i didn't really know i was still trying to develop it uh because i was predominantly uh a voice guy you know what i mean right. I'm a voice guy that that of course i started stand up early i did but you know i've always been really good at doing impressions so when you're really good at doing impressions Everything else has to line up with it. You got to be really, really good at jokes too. You can't just have one because you know, um, you know, people, you'll you'll be exposing the chinks in your armor. You know what I mean? You have to make sure that everything, everything is uh is is up to par. And um, yeah, I had to I had to make sure I had to get out there. I had to write more. I you had have to, more. You had more experience. You older. You had more exactly. life. It's, it's more That's another thing. That's another thing, bro. I was sheltered as a kid. I was a sheltered kid, bro. I come from a uh. 
a real marginalized um uh, a community of apostolic apostolic folks. I'm my folks are apostolic, man. So you know we didn't I didn't get exposed to everything that uh, a lot of people got exposed to as kids. You know I couldn't. There was certain stuff I couldn't listen to. I had to sneak and listen to Ludacris and right. uh, listen to Biggie. I, I had to sneak that stuff, man, because my parents they weren't having that. I remember I was playing Ludacris's um back for the first time, right? And I was playing his second track. And then the lyrics go, it's too many niggas, not enough hoes, too many rookies, not enough pros. That gang got switched, that's a ludicrous shi So all y'all can suck my di biatch. <laughs> that part was playing. My dad comes in my room as I, I start playing track number two. He said, oh, what you listening to? I said, oh, no. I said, no, nah, Tony Farrell. I said, not today. He said, no, 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 what don't you listen to? Go ahead and play it. So I, I said, okay. I played the joint. Da, 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 da. I hate it when there's too many niggas, not enough hoes, too many rookies. Da, da, da. <laughs> the gang got sweat, so it's a ludicrous shit. Oh, y'all can suck my dick. My dad said, absolutely not. He, just, <laughs> he took the CD, man. <laughs> he took the CD and put it in his room. But you know what's funny? That CD was a burn CD, so right. I just waited for it to leave for work and I swapped it out and I brought it back and listened to it. But I didn't have a lot of experience. Dude, I didn't, dude, I didn't get kissed till I was 16 years old. I didn't lose it till I was 18. There's things, normal kids probably right. would freaks at like 12, 13. They was smelling each other's fingers and shit. I ain't know nothing about that. Right. I just I didn't, I didn't have that. Oh, you want to see smell, smell this? You like what? <laughs> yeah. Oh, wait a minute, nigga. That's, that smell like crayons. What's happening? What, what's what's with it? Put your put put your finger. What what you what you what you drawing pictures of some shit? What why it smell like that? Um. So and so in my love my love life too, I hadn't experienced that. Right, much. right. Like I had when I left Virginia and I was on SNL. I had I had a girlfriend. You know what I'm saying? I dated her for four years. And then after that, after those four years, oh boy, them numbers. Woo. <laughs> <laughs> then I started, I started experiencing things. So I, right. I really didn't start experiencing life like living. All, all material. It's all material. It's yeah. all material. It's all material. You're not gonna get no. You know, I, I tell my writing students like writers live in the world. You have to live in the world. If you don't live in the Absolutely. world, then, you know what are you, what you, what you, what you talking about? You know. Our, Art imitates life, bro. Art imitates life. And everything that is funny is relatable. Every, every, everything that you go through, you, you might think that, that you're the only one that does something. No, we all do it. We just don't all talk about it. And with, <laughs> and folks are waiting for somebody to talk about it so they could be like, oh, I'm not alone. Because we all, we all do the same shit. I don't care if we, I don't care if you, I don't care if you're Asian. I don't care if you're, okay, Indian is Asian too, but shoot, you get, I don't care if you're Asian, black, white, Spanish, Latin, whatever the hell you are. If you have a family, y'all go through the same exact shit. Everybody does. It might, y'all might listen to different music, but the core general basis of it is all the same shit. It's shit. Yeah. So, and I had, I had to learn that. I thought stand up was like some hard shit. Like, Oh, I gotta, I gotta come over here. No motherfucker. You, Hey, Hey, be relatable. Don't try to be so different. I know you're trying to be different, right. but be different in commonality. We, we all do the same shit. Before I came down here to cut this on, I just, I had a bowl of cereal. I left like, it's like three fruity pebbles in a box. I just put that shit back on top of the. <laughs> Who you who you saving the pebbles for, man? The three fruity pebbles. Somebody fitting to be frustrated like shit when they go over there. They be like, oh man, I got me some pebbles. So, uh, uh, it's a it's a it's, it's Indian kid in DC doing the same thing. It's exactly. I'm not fishing that. Fishing that passes to the trash can. <laughs> no, no, no one would respect me, right? Don't you respect me, right? You're going to eat the pebbles. I, I bought the pebbles for everyone, but you're not, you're not going to get the pebbles. I don't understand. So we, so we, we, um, we cover a lot of, a lot of politics on this website. So yeah. I, I want to ask you, how, how would Barack Obama tell everyone they need to go see Spinning Gold as soon as it comes out? Uh, well, uh, he would say this. He would say that uh, everybody in this movie is absolutely phenomenal. Also, he would also say that Jay Farrell, he shines. Uh, huh. and the way 
uh, that's so resplendent uh, that probably wasn't highlighted the, the way that uh, people wanted it to be highlighted years ago. So uh, it's a big screen movie. Uh, go see it. And uh, I get percentages. So make sure you take your ass out to the movie theater and support uh, uh, black artists. I mean, there are other white people in there too, but it's a good, it's a good, it's a good, good movie. And it's about Motown, Buddha, Casablanca Records, and uh, the history of it uh, will never be seen like that ever again. It was uh, sex, drugs, rock and roll. And, um, you know, back in the day, uh, that's just what used to, used to happen. And uh, I think you're going to enjoy the ride and you're going to see a lot of people uh, together and you're going to learn a lot and you're going to end up loving those characters even more by the time you leave the film. So uh, go see it, bitch. <laughs> be careful, man. They, they, be careful, man. They, they, they want to lock you up. You too good at it, man. You too good at it. <laughs> Tell everybody when the movie comes out. It comes out March 31st. Spinning Gold. Make sure you check that out, everybody. In theaters everywhere. Not selected. In theaters everywhere. Man. Jay Farrell, thank you, man. Peace and blessings. Keep killing it. Thank you, my brother.